All right, one more thing. This winter, I don't see a lot of them. I saw them mostly in girls. I saw one at Hollister, a long one. There's one in, hold on. It's a white puffer jacket, but it, I know they got the Monk Fair one that's shiny, but it has to be like a comforter, bed comforter, like uh, a, a, like a, a, a IKEA comforter or from Bed Bath & Beyond or from the Great Indoors or from from like a comforter or duvet cover. It has, uh, the ja that's what I'm into this year, white comforter looking jacket. Like it looks like a white bed comforter. And, and it has to be the same material from the, but you can't use it every day, it's very dirty. You gotta be very careful with your coat. Um, so you gotta look at mint all white puffer jackets, you know. This one at Luli Lemon for two on special for two hundred nine right now. That one qualifies. One on Greens.com for four hundred thirty dollars. The long one at Hollister for only forty seven ninety nine. They got every color. Um, Sandro's they have one for four hundred seventy dollars. It's not too many for men. It's more for I've seen them more on women, but it, they they hot, you know. They look like a comforter. Luli Lemon has men and women. That's what Coop did too, you know. So I'm asking um, 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 Valentino to take one out and Salvatore Ferramo for the next year. So imagine we're going to take out a better one. Salvatore Ferramo and Valentino. Um, okay, next. I wanted to introduce you how Tony had to try to um, master and, and be the leader, the queer leader of the same sex oriented community, which they call LGBT community. I don't, identify myself with any lesbian gay um transgender lesbian bisexual whatever um queer lgbt and, and then he's looking at how he does it because he, he calls himself queer all the time l lesbian gay bisexual and transgender and then he slash q i'm the queer bitch you know i'm in charge of that pack so um, that's just an invention of Ryan Burns. We, we queer and we here to steer or whatever i don't know what they say but um in new york city there's 8,843 same-sex oriented people. Um, um, he can uh, in some uh, he came in contact in some sort of way with uh, even if it's phone, person, email, um, with 4,443 of them. In New York City, there's uh, open-minded people that are willing to switch baseball team or play in the same game, whatever you want to call it. There's 8,233 additional open-minded people, and still the ones you could in to the MoMA or uh, wherever you want to come into. Uh, um, I call that a conversion therapy when you can come into the MoMA, a girl or guy, he like, and they have problems. <laughs> That's conversion therapy in the MoMA. Um, Open-minded people, um, there are 8,233 people, only four he has come in contact with, including Danger Boy and Philip, Citibank, and the assistant of Aerosmith, of, um, I forgot his name, Rod something, um, Tyler Smith, or whatever his name is. The one, Jaden, dun, 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 dun. All right, that guy. Um, in New Jersey, there's 10,432 same-sex oriented people that identify themselves with the LGBT community um, from a 9 million people population. And in New Jersey, eight, Tony out of 10,432 has come in contact with 8,223 of those people. That's very dangerous in New Jersey. So I don't want anyone, you don't speak to no one in New Jersey. Those people are demonized. You don't talk to any gay people or any of those LGBT people in New Jersey. Because out of those 8,800, none of them are lesbians. How many lesbians in New Jersey? Over 2,000. So he's speaking to every, he spoke to every single male that's open mind of same sex oriented in New Jersey. Out of the 10,000, I mean. And then there's 8,823 that are open-minded. No, in New Jersey, there's 19,000, sorry, 123 people that are open-minded. He has come in contact um, with 11 of them. I know one of them, I'm not going to know. put him in the circle one. Uh, <laughs> he turned his parents like he's going to kill them. They're going to they they pull that shit again. <laughs> anyway, so I'm saying, Tony, we need to do a game plan for Tony. I'm giving him four weeks to die. We're gonna pronounce for four weeks for Tony to die. That's a big pronounce for a big man. A big pants, like party pants. And then New York City Slub Boy, or New Jersey Slub Boy, or Linden Slub Boy. New York, New York City Slub Boy. You're not a boy anymore, Tony. You're not New York City Slub Boy. You're New York City Slub Antique. You know your city slut garbage. You know your city slut. Filthy.
trashy ass person cloning it. It's time for you to hang up towels from, you don't know um, experts terminology. It's time for you to throw the towel, Tony. Tony, you're obsessed with my life. You're obsessed with power, the instant, and bad judgment, and bad mentality, and emotional state, and mental state of Thomas Jefferson. You have the same stuff in your head. What's the fault of the Democrat Party? That's my question. Who, who fault is the Democrat Party for? You know, I don't know. I don't care about politics that one for you. Who founded the Democrat Party? Treating me and my team like little shit. I remember that. I was dead. I want to see a picture of this man. Y'all got the king of all. Democrat Party. Fuck out of here. Hakeem Jeffries. Uh, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, on January 8, 1820, and then 196 years ago in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. The Democrat Party is one of the two major contemporary political parties in the United States since the 1850s. Its main political rival has been the Republican Party, considered to be a historical successor to the Democrat Republican Party. The Democrat Party was founded in 1828 by President Martin Van Buren. Play a major role in building the Democrat Party is arguably the world's oldest active political party. The party to support expansive presidential power, the interests of slave states, agrarianism, and expansionism. While opposing the National Bank and high tariffs, it split in 1860 over slavery and won the presidency only twice in the 50 years between 1860 and 1910. Although it won the popular vote a total of four times in that period, in the late 19th century it continued to oppose high tariffs and had fierce internal debates on the gold standard. In the early 20th century, it supported progressive reforms and open imperialism with Woodrow, President Woodrow Wilson winning in the White House in 1912 and 1916. Since Franklin D. Roosevelt was elected president in 1939, the Democrat Party has promoted a social liberal platform that includes support for social security and unemployment insurance. The New Deal attracted strong support from the party from our recent European immigrants but diminished the party's pro-business wing. From late in Roosevelt's administration through the 1950s, a minority in the party's southern wing joined with conservative Republicans to slow and stop progressive domestic reforms following the Great Society and the progressive legislation under Lyndon B. Johnson, which is often to overcome the conservative coalition in the 1960s. The core basis of the party shifted, with the southern states becoming more reliably Republican and northeastern states becoming more reliably Democrat. The party's labor union element has been smaller since the 1970s, and its American electoral shifted in a more conservative direction following Ronald Reagan's presidency. The election of Bill Clinton marked a more move for the party toward the toward the third way, moving the party's economic stance toward market-based economic policy. Barack Obama oversaw the party's passage of the Affordable Cable Care Act in 2010 during Joe Biden's presidency. The party has adopted an increasingly progressive economic agenda. All right, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's the history of the Democrat Party. Um, he did not invent the Democrat Party. Um, to the, um, he's not a reincarnated devil. That, um, to the, um, he just needs to go. He's obsessed with us. He's obsessed with the Feliciano family. He's mad at the model out. My grandma had an affair with his aunt. He's just miserable. He's a miserable, miserable fuck. He hates life. The only way he gets satisfaction is when they put a fist up his butt. Or two fists up his butt. Like, he's nasty. He's a disgusting, filthy, filthy scumbag. You've been mean. This is atrocity to our, world, our nation. And then he sits, he still goes to the Pupils on Sunday at the Episcopalian Church in Cranston, New Jersey. And actually, nothing's wrong. Alright, 